All right, so the next uh, experiment, experiment 32, um, and it has to do with biofilms, introduction of biofilms. So biofilms are really cool. Uh, one of my favorite things, it's one of like the major emerging um, fields in microbiology nowadays. Um, but what it is, it's like a layer of bacteria that forms on the surface of stuff. Um, so it can form on teeth, contacts, retainers, boats, buckets left outside, bodies of water, artificial joints, all kinds of stuff, right? Um, and they kind of all kind of go through the same mechanism of action. So what happens is that you have like an initial population of bacteria attached to a surface, all right? And then what happens is, is they'll, they kind of release these carbohydrates that kind of like attract in nutrients and um, which then colonize uh, like a certain thing. So you kind of recruit more. Um, well, the, okay, well, yeah, then you start recruiting more and more bacteria and you start to grow this thing. Um, so then the you continuously do this and then the, the biofilm kind of grows and grows and grows until, um, and it develops pretty, pretty big. And that's how, that's when you can start like feeling it on like your teeth or whatever to kind of get that gritty kind of layer on your teeth. That's what, that's like this stage right here. Uh, like after you wake up in the morning, um, they've been like growing all, all during the sleep. Uh, and so they can, they develop to where they have these like channels that you can kind of like stuff can like flow through and it can like replenish and they get very elaborate. Like if you, um, if you ever like look at a biofilm that's formed like on something outside, they, they can get pretty like big and elaborate um, to, for recruitment and stuff like that. But then they eventually reach a certain point where they burst and then all these bacteria kind of break open and then these things can go attached to other things. And it's kind of like a cycle that they can go attached and create more biofilms. And so your biofilms can just exponentiate. Um, it was got a really interesting like lifestyle and how they communicate is very important and we'll talk about it now. Um, so communication through they communicate through quorum sensing. So at this stage right here, um, they I think we're um, hold on. So synthesize your answer. So yeah, they they release these like carbohydrates um, to recruit and then they also release a molecule um, called Harris homoserine lactone. So it's called quorum sensing. So what a quorum is, if any of you all are in like any Greek life, um, you need quorum to vote, right? Or if you do anything that has to do with like politics and stuff like that, you need quorum. So a quorum is that you have the proper number of people in the room to vote on a certain issue. Um, so what are the percentages like depending on the organ, like on the, uh, on the organization or whatever. Um, but that's just what it's doing. It's like, all it's saying is that we need a certain amount of cells to have something to be to be here in order to do something. All right, and so it makes homoserine lactone. So it's like a molecule um, that gets secreted, and then once that gets to a certain concentration, the quorum is reached, right, and then it allows you to do something. So it may be the mechanism of infection or... Um, like if it, you know, once we get to a certain quorum, then we all make a virulence factor. Or once we get to a certain quorum, we all like settle down. So this is saying like, once we get to a certain quorum, you can then proceed to the next stage of biofilm synthesis, right? Um, and this is more effective than the slow release of something. So like if you, so if your body, just picture this. So if you have in your body like some cells, all right? And it's going to slowly release a virulence factor. What's going to happen is your immune system is going to say, oh, look, we're starting to get more and more of this virulence factor in our cells. We need to start killing it. And so it's like, oh, okay, so once you once it recognizes it, it can then go kill those cells. But if you, if you build up the quorum and then just release it all at once, it's just like your body's like, oh, where did all these come from? Like, we have all these virulence factors here, and we are like over it. And it takes a little bit to – so it allows the – your, your cells to live a little bit longer, replicate, maybe reproduce, infect other people and live longer. So it's a, it's a mechanism of, of survival, um, of not being destroyed by certain things like the immune system. Um, but it's like the simplest example like ever. So all we did was we got some pond water, right? And then we put it in a cup and then put a glass slide in there. Um, and then we looked at it underneath the microscope and it's really cool. You can you know, see stuff moving every now and then. And that, it's a cool experiment. And I think we did a gram stain on it to look at like, um, 
different stuff. But the cool thing is about this one, we see all kinds of protists, all kinds of other bacteria. So it's not only restricted to, um, to just like bacteria like we usually work with. So it's a, it's a cool experiment that you can kind of see general microbiology um, as a whole.